Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Cassie. Today I have the Simon Says Stamp April 2020 Follow the Rainbow card kit. This kit is sold out uh, and I know this was just a crazy time for Simon Says Stamp as far as not being able to get into their shop and actually ship things. So this finally got here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look at what came in the kit. If things are still available, I will, ha will have them linked and we'll go from there. All right, let's take a look at what came in the kit. I know that a couple of my things had to actually be replacements because I think they didn't have any more of them, but this this is the Fine Detail White Embossing Powder by Simon Says Stamp. Um, and then you're gonna get a sucker, of course. You gotta have your candy, right? So I did get that. I did get some inks. Now, I think the inks were supposed to be some Simon Says Stamp inks, but I ended up getting these Distress inks, and I'm not even mad about that because these are inks I would typically use. I actually didn't have the peeled paint, so I'm, I'm stoked about that, and I will definitely get use out of those. And there's Max checking things out. Here's the stamp set. This is a four by six stamp set called Fall the Rainbow. We also have a coupon code. We did get four watercolor cards that came in there. You get some uh, Simon Says Stamp envelopes in the colors Island Blue and White. These papers I am absolutely in love with, and that's 12 Whimsy Stamps 6x6 rainbow papers. They're all just gorgeous. Like, I can't even say enough how gorgeous these papers are. Like, I really do want to hoard them, or I may have to buy more because I love them. Um, yeah, and then you get a cloud stencil. I actually already have this stencil. This is called the Clouds for Days stencil. You get an idea sheet and then you get some cardstock. You're going to get cardstock in island blue, doll pink, royal purple, and then a couple in 120 pound white. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our first card. I've got some masking magic paper by Gina K put into my Misty and I've taken the stamp. All I want is that umbrella, so I'm just gonna ink that up with some black ink that I have. Uh, just some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'll stamp that down. And then I'm going to trim right on top of the line because this mask is you know, obviously a mask and I don't want there to be any sort of halo, so I'll cut right on the line all the way around that. Now I've taken one of the pieces of pattern paper and I'm gonna line that up inside of my Misty along with the image that is in the stamp set. And I'm just lining that up best I can and then I am going to grab my magic powder bag because I plan to do some embossing and I'm going to rub that over the top of that paper. This paper is just so pretty. It's super smooth too. So I want to make sure that I don't have powder sticking where it shouldn't. I'll ink up most of the image that I want or all the image that I want with some of that Versamark ink and then I'll pull that away and then I'm going to cover that with some of that white detail ink that came in the kit. And you'll notice that I have powder in places I don't necessarily want but you can fix that. All you need is a stiff brush. And with that stiff brush, you can push away any of the embossing powder you don't want. And since this is a clear sticky ink that you used, you're really not gonna see any of that residual left behind. So I'll just cover or, you know, get rid of all that. And then we're gonna heat set what is left. So that worked out pretty easily, pretty nicely. So once that is heat set, we're gonna put it back into our Misty and then I'm going to move the stamp once again. I'll use my magic powder bag, uh, but first we're gonna put the mask over the top of the one umbrella because I want these to overlap. So I'm gonna move my image, and I'm kinda lazy, so I'm just taking the back, <laughs> the backing from the stamp, and I'm gonna put that inside my Misty so that I can manipulate my stamp without having to clean it. I know, lazy or clever or whatever you wanna think. So I'll use my magic powder bag over the top and do the exact same thing that I just did. And I'm gonna do this all the way down the card. I'm not gonna show you the last one I stamp, but so I do that again. I'll cover that with that white embossing powder. And I'm even gonna leave the mask there simply because the mask, uh, if you pull that away, sometimes that has a tendency to leave some stickiness behind and I don't wanna have powder going all over that stickiness. So, um, once again, I will use my stiff bristle brush and I'll get rid of any of that powder where I don't want it to be. And then once again, we'll heat set this till that is smooth and melted as well. But this is a really simple process and you can just keep going um, back and forth until you are happy with what you have. So again, I will stamp that and ink that one more time. And then we're gonna fussy cut all the way around the right hand side of this because I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to leave some on the right hand side or whatnot, but we're just gonna fussy cut around this image. Right now that the right hand side has been fussy cut, I am gonna cut a chunk of it off because I do wanna use the back portion 
Uh, but I'm also trimming this down to be the front of an A2 size card, which would be five and a half inches. But I want that yellow, I want those yellow hearts to kind of show on that right hand side. And here I'm trying to determine and I decided I'm just going to go ahead and fussy cut all those umbrellas out. My card base is some of that island blue cardstock. I'm scoring that at four and a quarter inches. So this will be a side folding A2 size card. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue down this portion to the front of the card all the way to the right hand side of the card. And I thought about popping up my umbrellas, but then I thought I just wanted these to lay flush as well. So we're going to put some of that liquid glue on the back of those also, and then we'll just adhere those down to the front. And then we'll work on our sentiment. There's a lot of great sentiments in this kit, and it's fantastic how well they just coordinate with what's going on in the world right now. So I've got my magic powder bag. I thought my sentiment would fit down there, and then I thought it would just look better up there. So I'll use that magic powder bag up there. I will ink this up with some Versamark ink and then I'm going to cover that with that white embossing powder again and then we'll just heat set that till that is smooth and melted as well. And then we are going to decorate the inside of the card. I mean we figure we might as well. So I did cut down some strips of that rainbow paper. I'm just going to put that on both sides just leaving a little bit of the blue border. I love doing this with pattern paper in the inside of cards. It gives a lot of, it just frames whatever it is you're writing really nicely. I love it. And so then I'm also going to uh, heat emboss the sentiment on the inside that just says thinking of you. And then we'll do the exact same thing with that. Just heat setting that as well. And then I'm going to pull in a number eight Secura Jelly Roll pen and just put a few little dots. It just needed a little something, so I'll just put a few little dots. This is a fairly simple flat card, but there is card number one. I will say it was a little bit difficult to come up with some ideas because uh, this is a smaller stamp set with one image, but we did stretch ourselves. For card number two, I'm just going to cut down a panel of the royal purple cardstock to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I'm going to cut down a piece of the pattern paper to be four inches by five and a quarter so that when I layer those up, there will be a little bit of a purple border around that pattern paper. This is not going to be an open up card, really. There's going to be a small open up piece that goes on the top or the front of this, but it's mostly just going to be like a panel. So I'm going to trim down this white cardstock to be three inches by five and a half inches. And then I'm going to score that at about two and three quarters. Uh, and then that's going to be where our little note is going to go. It's a little bit different, but sometimes we don't need a giant space to write. And so I just thought this would be a cute way. Then you can still send it in an A2 size envelope. So for the stamping element, I'm going to take the other half of that panel that I cut down and I'm going to stamp the umbrella again. We're going to go ahead and stamp the umbrella. Before I do that, I am going to trim down that scrap piece of the pattern paper. And then we're going to use our powder bag. We're going to stick that inside of our misty, and then we're going to, just like the same process before, we're going to ink up our umbrella with some Versamark ink, then cover that with some of the white embossing powder, and then heat set that till that is smooth and melted. In this case, though, I don't care that all that stuff is around it uh, because I'm going to fussy cut out the umbrella, which was really pretty simple because there's just not a lot to it. So once that is heat set, that's going to be fussy cut and then we'll get ready to start assembling our pieces. I'm going to stick down that scrap piece to the front of the little note card we have and then I'll adhere the, the um, umbrella. I'm, well, I'm setting the umbrella on there because I want to see exactly where my sentiment's going to go. I'm just grabbing out a couple of sentiments and then I'll pick those up with my stamp block, lining those up, and then we're going to ink that up with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And if you see me rub it on my hand, that's because these are brand new stamps and I just want to condition that. The oils on your hand will sometimes condition the stamps a little bit. All right, so now we're going to adhere that to the front part of the panel. And then just kind of centering that the best we can. And then, <laughs> of course, my hands are inky, so I did get some ink on there, so I'm going to use my mono sand eraser to get some of the ink off. That happened to be the theme of making all the cards that I made today. I ended up getting fingerprints of ink all over everything. <laughs> all right, we'll adhere that panel down to the purple panel, and then we're going to use just a piece of foam tape in the corner, and we'll attach down our umbrella. But I don't want to stop there. I am going to grab some Nouveau Drops in the color Crushed Grape, and we'll just put a few of those down. I thought those matched so nicely with the pattern or the purple paper, the royal purple. I thought it was beautiful. So we'll just put a few drops of that. We'll tap those down to make them look like enamel dots. 
and then that's going to finish off card number two. So it's a little bit different. I think it's kind of fun, but there it is. Card number three is going to be a pretty simple background. We're going to start with some of that white cardstock that came in the kit, and I'm just going to score that. I'm not going to fold it yet, but I'm going to score it at four and a quarter inches. I'm going to take some heavy tape and just go right along that score line because we are going to stencil the entire background. Now, this was my second attempt. <laughs> First time I tried to use an ink blending tool, but I needed a softer tool. So this is where my blending brush comes in, and it does a much, much better job here. I wanted something soft, whereas the uh, mini ink blending tool that one brought a lot of, uh, anyway, it just didn't blend smoothly. So we're going to use our blending brush the whole time, or not our blending brush, our makeup brush. <clears throat> and we're just going to use some of that heavy tape to cover up pieces. I'm not even cleaning off my stencil in between. You can call it lazy, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, yeah, it's probably lazy, but I'm just going to go with it. And so my colors are, this first one was Festive Berry. They sent that in the kit. The second one is Fossilized Amber. That one was one I already had. And then we're going to use the rest of the colors that came in the kit as well. So this next one is peeled paint that came in the kit. And all I'm doing is alternating colors, doing a rainbow from top to bottom. And, you know, in some cases where I cleaned off or didn't clean off the stencil, it's really not a big deal. Some cases, it, you know, it makes those clouds look brown in some areas. But honestly, you're not really going to pay that much attention. You can obviously tell that we're going for a rainbow look. I do clean off my brush in between, but not a whole lot on the way of the stencil. This next one is Mermaid Lagoon. And uh, so, yeah, we're just alternating our clouds. Uh, and it's really a brilliant design to have the clouds on the inside. The only issue I have is that, you know, if you're not careful, like I'm usually not, you'll get ink into the other clouds, which is where using some of that heavy tape or post-it tape or whatever you might have is what you'll need to keep the um, ink from getting into the other clouds or going into areas it shouldn't. And then this final color was the, oh, I didn't write that down, I don't think. Oh no, it's um, Seedless Preserves. So that final color is Seedless Preserves. And then we're going to put that into our Misty and I'm going to grab the, the girl with the umbrella and I'm going to ink her up with some Vers Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm not going to color her, I'm just going to leave her as is. I thought she looked really pretty with that rainbow background the way it is. We'll clean her off and then we're going to bring in our sentiment which is just thinking of you. We'll stamp that there. And then I got to thinking this card just felt a little bit flimsy to me the way it was. So I'm going to trim it down, just keeping it at four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that will be a whole panel. And this is where I screwed up. This was my, not this is where I screwed up, but this was my screwed up panel. But I'm going to do the inside. So I'm using some of that heffy tape and we're going to do the same premise as we did before. So I'm going to ink up with some festive berries and once again, not cleaning off my stencil. Um, but I am using that heavy tape and you'll notice like why are you putting it on that top cloud? What are you afraid? It's going to get ink on the glass mat. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but you know creature a habit So I just was like, okay got to cover those clouds that aren't being used And so I keep doing it and you know on that one it makes a little bit of sense, but you know, it's just whatever I'm just going with it. So then we'll move on to the fossilized amber the peeled paint now the mermaid lagoon and then um then we'll move on to our festive berries, but or not festive berries, but uh, seedless preserves. But yeah, I do it again with this one. I cover up that one area like, oh, I gotta cover that because we don't want to get ink, what, on the glass mat? <laughs> so yeah, there we go. But it looks good on the inside. I think that looks fun and that was fine. I just find that I have to do something to the inside or it just feels like an unfinished card anymore. So I'll put some glue on my panel and I'll, I'll attach that to my card base, but I don't want to stop there. I do grab some white Blizzard Nouveau drops, and I'm just going to be pretty liberal with those, almost like they're raindrops, except they're just drops. Um, so I'm not making them actually look like raindrops too much, but it does add to the illusion. And then they look white right now, but when they dry, they'll be clear with bits of glitter in them, and it's so, so pretty. And uh, yeah, so I like how this one turned out a lot. This one is probably my favorite. Right, moving on to f card number four, which is our final card today. I'm going to go ahead and score this at four and a quarter inches, and we're going to sort of start out by doing the same thing we did on the last one. Uh, we are going to do some stenciling, except we are going to use the cloud stencil the other way it was intended. So I'm using that heavy tape once again. 
I'm going to pull out another piece of it because I will need strips of it just to cover up those clouds on the inside. And this time it actually makes sense. <laughs> uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to do the stenciling on the outside of the stencil so that you can have a continuous cloud from one side to the other, which is cool. So I'm using some white pigment ink. And if you don't want it to be so stark white like I did, you may want to start or maybe either not fill your brush as much as I did or start more on the stencil and work your way out. Then you can get softer clouds that way. But all I'm doing is I keep turning the stencil just so I can try all the different sides of the stencil. And I'm just going back and forth this way. Now you notice that this stencil is obviously getting pretty dirty. And if I were smart, <laughs> I would have washed it off as I was going along, but yeah, anyway, uh, I don't. And so you can see my hands are starting to get pretty dirty. By some miracle, I didn't get it all over the card. It's shocking, I know, but for some reason I didn't do it. But my hands just kept getting dirtier and dirtier. I don't know, maybe I was, I, I learned and I'm just careful, not sure. But I'm going to work my way down this entire card panel, a card front just working that stencil all along. Some of that's gonna get covered up on the left-hand side just because I use a piece of pattern paper, but I, I'm happy with how that turned out. Uh, so we're gonna trim down this pattern paper to be about, I wanna say maybe an inch and a half, I think. And then uh, we're gonna tack that down to the side. Now you'll notice that I oftentimes when I'm tacking down pattern paper, any paper to the front if it's longer than my card, I will put like a little bit of glue on the top part and then I'll put glue on the back of my other piece. This just ensures that I don't have to go all the way to the top. So many times in the past I have like glued up the entire piece because I'm unsure of how much glue I actually need and you just don't need all that much because then you end up getting glue all over your glass mat or whatever it is you're using and then you have to clean that up. This just makes it so I don't have to go that far. I'm stamping my sentiments using that same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink that I've been using before. And then I'm going to do just little half inch strips of this paper to put on the inside as well. This paper is so, so pretty. I've said that before. Um, I just love it. The patterns are gorgeous. The colors are vibrant. It's just gorgeous paper. So um, I wanted to use it all over the place. So yeah, as you can see, I did a little little sliver at the top of where my piece is going to go. And then, like I said, it ensures I don't have to just put glue all the way to the top, not knowing where it actually ends. And yes, I could trim down my paper, but I have found that I'm much more accurate in trimming down the paper if I do it after I've attached it, if that makes any sense. Um, because oftentimes I'll either keep it too long or have it too long, and then I still have to go back and trim, or I've trimmed it too short, and then you have a problem there too. So just trimming off those excess pieces. And then as a final bit of embellishment, I'm going to grab out these Trinity embellishments. These are called the Bubble Blower, and I'm telling you, I was on the struggle bus at this point. Uh, my Crystal Katana, I needed to wipe off the edge of it. That's why it wasn't grabbing my pieces very easily. I was dumping the Bubble Blower embellishments everywhere, but here we go. Finally finished card number four. Pretty simple one, but love the impact of that rainbow. And then I did make two bonus cards. I'll show you those here at the end, but let's go ahead and take a look at all the cards I made today. Um, the two bonus ones that I ended up making, I just watercolored two of the panels that came in the kit, and I just attached those to card fronts. But I would love to know which one of these was your favorite. If you did, in fact, have a favorite, go ahead and leave that in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I typically have three to four videos a week, and I would love it if you kept sticking around. So, um, as always, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye, everybody.